Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about the portfolio manager, Peter Han, reiterating his price target on AMC and what he thinks is going to happen. And I also want to talk about what Charles Payne just said about AMC. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So the Twitter thread starts with Rockstar Astronaut talking about Lou's real price target right now. I know a lot of people have different opinions of Lou. I personally think he's absolutely brilliant. He does have a lot of energy, but I think he's hilarious. But what's more important is the conversation that followed. Chelsea replied saying this makes sense because Peter Han said months ago that the whisper number was 5k on the street, and therefore 12k is not too far-fetched. Peter Han replied saying I said on LinkedIn in response to a question that there was talk on parts of the net that the off-book price was around $5,000 per AMC share. But I also noted that given the constant retail buying, I wouldn't be surprised if we soon go to $10,000 per share. Somebody clarified and says, so does that mean when AMC pops, it will be 5k per share? Peter Han said no guarantees. The implied value of the share will change as the mother of all short squeezes starts and will depend on where people sell. If lots of people sell at $500 per share, the implied value of the share will drop. The artificial intelligence is trying to calculate the clearing price and has assumptions on selling rates which reflect 5k. And therefore what Peter Han is estimating is that the top of the AMC squeeze will easily see 5k and will easily see 10k and could be much higher. And Peter Han as a portfolio manager is fairly fairly confident on that. Obviously he did say no guarantees but I think the reason he said this is to make sure that nobody holds him illegally accountable for what he's just said. But I do think this is absolutely incredible that the off-book price for AMC is going to be around 5 or 10k or even higher and that the AI is already trying to calculate the clearing price. This is basically saying that the hedgies already know that AMC is going to squeeze, they're just trying to get the AI to calculate what price it's going to squeeze to. Now somebody also made an incredible point that I completely agree with and I think needs to happen. Citadel needs to be removed from being a market maker on AMC because of their algos and taking the opposite side of buy orders to pin the stock and limit upward pressure for their own benefit and because of the fact that the Citadel hedge fund owns short positions on AMC, it's a clear conflict of interest. How can you hold a short position on a company or hold a short position on a stock and then make the market for that exact same stock and route pretty much all of the trades for that exact same stock without there being a clear conflict of interest. Citadel are going to absolutely do whatever they can to make sure all of these routed orders do not positively impact the price of AMC because they have short positions on AMC. Yes, you can argue that Citadel the hedge fund and Citadel the market maker are two completely different entities and two completely different companies, but at the end of the day, they're still both owned by Ken Griffin. I think we need to petition for Citadel to be removed as a market maker for AMC or petition for Citadel to be forced to sell their shorts and route trades in AMC fairly. Now, I also wanted to quickly clarify some things with my partner, Mumu. You probably already know, but payment for order flow is the number one income stream for brokers like Robinhood and Webull. However, Futu, which is Moomoo's parent company, makes their income from commission fees and margin interest, not from payment for order flow. Moomoo currently route their transactions through interactive brokers. However, they're also working on adding a feature where you can choose which exchange or choose the best exchange to route your orders through. Moomoo also provide free real-time level two market data, advanced charting tools, and many more other resources to help you trade like a pro. So be sure to sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below and deposit at least $100 to get the special Thomas James Investing promotion. Not only do you get a free stock worth up to $350, but you also get a second free stock of NEO with a value of around $42. And if you deposit $2,000, then you also get a third free stock of General Motors with a value of around $58. Somebody's also asked the question, why are they working so hard to keep the price here? Because they know if AMC breaks upwards out of this pennant or rising wedge or rising triangle, whatever you want to call it, 
they are done. And I thought I'd show you this screenshot from Jackson Hunter to show you just how close we are to breaking upwards out of this rising wedge or pennant or triangle. As you can see from today's action and today's close, we closed at around 41.71, which is literally right on the very top of this rising wedge. I am very, very excited to see what happens in the pre-market of Monday morning, whether we fall back into this wedge or whether we break out over the wedge and continue our move upwards. And as Charles Payne just said, breaking news. Market minutes is AMC through $45 and it's to the moon. If we look back at this chart, a break of $45 would mean a break of this double top that we can see here and a move back towards $50, $53 that we saw back here. A break of that $53 mark would mean a likely gap fill all the way up to somewhere between $60 and $65 before reaching all-time highs at $72. I do think when we break through this $53 mark, it is going to be quite a push to get through the $55 mark because as we can see, there is a very large zone of resistance all between $55 and $60. Jackson Hunt has also given us a bit of an update and some instructions and information on Log the Flow. User of Intellect and I will do a Twitter space call this weekend to speak on the importance of and to answer more questions on this project. This site will be up on November the 8th, midnight PST, which is Monday. Please share and use Log the Flow. And his post says below you can log the AMC shares you own safely, privately, and globally. Please read our FAQs before submitting your shares. He says, here's what you'll need. The number of shares you own, only shares, not options. You do not need to log already DRS shares. See FAQs to find out why. A screenshot of the number of shares you own. Please make sure your private information is removed or cropped. The screenshots will be available for community or public verification. And number three, deciding whether you want to log your shares as a guest, no email required, or you want to create an account to be able to modify your number of shares later in case you buy more. And there's also some brilliant features of Log the Float as well. You can only upload a screenshot once. The server will identify the duplicates based on the meta info of the image. If you submit one screenshot more than once, your IP and your account will be banned indefinitely which is to preserve the integrity of the data. So Jackson Hunter and Log the Flow are taking data integrity very, very seriously because they do want to get an accurate share count and not have tons and tons of duplicate screenshots. If you log your shares as a guest, you will not be able to edit your entry later. You will also not be able to add another screenshot later because only one submission from each IP address will be recorded or accepted. But obviously if you do create an account, you can edit your entry later and submit more than one screenshots. And he's also said your IP address is public information. Every website you visit does log your IP address. An IP address can never reveal your exact location or identity. However, due to the concern, we decided to hide the IP addresses from the public eye but it is required for us to maintain the integrity of the data and prevent flooding. You can use VPNs, incognito browsers, or proxies to hide your IP if you're still concerned about your privacy. However, if someone else has used the same VPN or same proxy IP, then your shares may be marked as duplicated and ignored. I do think that Log the Float have done the best they physically can to protect your information and personal data. You obviously don't have to sign up and give your account information, while still trying to make sure that each share and each screenshot is authentic and not duplicated. This is a way for us apes to get an accurate idea of just how many shares there are of AMC out there right now. It's not being created by a public corporation like Say Technologies, it's being created by us apes. You also don't have to sign in with your Robinhood account information or your Fidelity account information or your Moomoo account information, you just provide a screenshot. I do also think it's still a very, very good idea to DRS your shares if you can or if you want to, but I do also completely understand that not everybody wants to DRS their shares because it is more difficult to access and slightly more difficult to sell. And now I also wanted to talk about the SEC winning a jury trial against the hedge fund and the hedge fund advisor who ran a manipulative short scheme. This basically means that the SEC just sued somebody for a short and distort scheme. I do think that this is a brilliant step in the right direction. So many of these short hedge funds that make reports on Twitter and in the public eye are mostly just running short and distort schemes. 
These reports are often not very well put together and often don't contain many slash if any factual information and therefore are clear short and distort schemes and therefore it's very good that the SEC are actually starting to fight back against it. Jurors in Boston Federal Court today returned a verdict in the SEC's favour against the hedge fund advisor and his investment advisory firm. The hedge fund advisor, Lamelson, made a series of false statements to shake investor confidence in Ligand and lower its stock price. The jury found Lamelson and Lamelson Capital Management liable for fraudulent misrepresentations. Investment professionals play a crucial role in our markets, and when they break the law, they undermine investors' trust, said Gerber Garul, director of the SEC's Division of Enforcement. We'll continue to use all of the tools in our toolkit to hold wrongdoers accountable including litigating whenever necessary. This verdict underscores that commitment, as well as our staff's ability, tenacity and expertise to win those trials. And now I also wanted to talk about the problems in China getting real. Evergrande has just sold off two of its private jets for more than $50 million as it tries to control its huge debts. This is very much a last chance, last ditch resort attempt to get cash into the business. The fact that they're selling off used private jets to get any money they can really shows that Evergrande is strapped for cash and is absolutely broke. Evergrande sold two of its private Gulfstream jets in October. So it's not as if it was done right now today on the 5th of November. This was done a few weeks ago in October. I wonder how that's potentially how they made those payments for the onshore bonds by selling off private jets to cover interest repayments. One jet was sold for under $40 million and the second was sold for around $15 million. The only problem with doing this is now they don't have any more private jets to sell off and therefore can't meet any more bond repayments. Evergrande's debt pile is $300 billion and the company faces a series of imminent bond payments. Analysts have warned that a collapse of Evergrande would harm the global economy, not just the Chinese economy, but the global economy. Sales of the two jets closed in October, around the time that Evergrande made two last-minute bond interest payments of $83.5 million and $45.2 million. Now interestingly, these are the offshore bond payments and the payment for those hasn't actually been confirmed by anyone in Hong Kong and hasn't been confirmed by any of the investors or any of the bank lenders. This has been reported as factual news by Western media based on an agreement to pay, not necessarily on the actual payment itself. There's still been no word whether these payments have actually been made. So both of these jets were sold to aviation investors. It'd be really interesting to see what jets were actually sold and whether $40 million and $15 million are fair prices for these jets or whether the investors got a massive, massive discount or a fire sale. That would go to show just how strapped for cash Evergrande really is if they're even selling off their private jets on the cheap. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about Peter Han reiterating his price target for AMC of over $5,000 and over $10,000 per share. And if you haven't already, be sure to get those three free shares with Moomoo linked in the description down below because at the end of the day, everybody loves free money. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.